if I had an opportunity to go and do life once again, of course, with the experience that I now have gathered, if you were to boot me back 20 years ago, and then I started all over again, there are some things that I will do and there are some things that I will not do. And I've been gathering this data and I want to share with you in this series. We are in the middle of a series where we are discussing the 10 things that I will do if I was to go back in my life. What would I do if I were to start over? First, I will love more expressively and more vulnerably and more intimately. Second, I would be more true to my calling and to my purpose. Third, I will be more of a finisher. Fourth, I will take more risks. Fifth, I will be more goal-oriented. And sixth, I will live my life fully daily. We're continuing with the same message today discussing what would I do if I was to go back. 20 years from now, stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Someone said, and I don't know who that is, that repetition is the master of mastery, something towards that nature. And if you are a musician, people will normally tell you that the way to learn how to play an instrument or the way to learn how to become a master, it is through practice, 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 practice. They ask you, what are the three things that are critical for you to become a master, virtuoso in whatever you are doing in music or in art? They will tell you, practice, practice, and practice. So we can borrow a leaf from that in life and look at this concept of going back into our lives and doing it again. This time round with information that we have already gathered from the life that we have lived. And we've said in the beginning of this series that either life is happening to you or you are making things happen by your intentionality, by your agency and by the direction that you're taking in life. And as you do that, as the years pass, you're going to be learning some things, you're going to be unlearning some things, you're going to be wishing some things, you're going to be regretting others. And a tapestry of all that information can be used if you're to go back and you start living your life once again. And we're doing this because a review is an important aspect of your life that gives you an opportunity to use the information that you've gathered in your life so that you can go ahead and do life better and this time around more intelligently. There's not a single person that I know that doesn't have experience. <laughs> Even a day-old baby does have some experiences that they have learned and they are in their subconscious somewhere there. So we can borrow from our lives and we can use whatever data that we have. Our failures are important. Our regrets are important. Our fears are important. The feedback that life has given us is important for us to use it. The reason as to why this is so is because, number one, we are human beings. As in, we, like I said in the previous episodes, there's no way that you can be born today and you know everything. 
we are not given one strike to do everything that's why human beings one of our greatest need is learning growth and development we are always in the mode of learning knowing something new every single working day and that's why i think google is one of the most beneficial one of the most uh, valuable companies in the face of the earth because human beings are always learning something so if you are to go back in your life think about it if you are to go back right now if someone tells you you've learned this and you've learned that if you are to go back if they were to take you back 20 years from now 40 years from now if you are 40 or whatever if you are older if they were to take you back some years and you started living again with the information that you already have right now what exactly are you going to do better what are you going to change what are you going to start what are you going to stop doing what are you going to accentuate what are you going to improve on what is the data you see having that data in your life is important for you to live a quality life there is nothing as useless as living today the way you lived yesterday and the way you lived last year and the way you lived the previous years there's nothing as useless as that that means that you haven't changed a bit you haven't learned anything And the thing is that we can always be better we can always do better can always become a better person that's why I'm still alive I'm still alive so that I can improve the reason as to why you and I are still living today is that we have a new opportunity a better way to make things a new opportunity to make things better and to do to become better human beings so if you are to go back Uh, maybe some years back what would you do differently what would you start differently and i've been sharing with you the aspects of that message in this series in this mini series on this podcast and i've already initiated you and i've told you for me i will do things to do with loving things to do with purpose things to do with living every day fully things to do with taking risks things to do with my life that is focused and i want to continue today with several other messages if i was to go back in my life what would i do differently and i've shared all the way number 1 up to number 6 and i want to continue with number 7 the seventh thing that i would do differently if i was to go back if i was to live my life again if i was to restart my life if i was to reboot my life number 7 i would be hokish i will be more hokish about building reserves ha there's something called the ant philosophy and i need you to go and google that i think it was written by jim ron or something like that the ant philosophy is very important for you to internalize there are very many things you can learn about the ant because the the ant stores for the winter and when the winter comes when uh, things are tough when the weather is not conducive for you to be producing what comes up is reserves and i've learned the hard way very many times in my life i've been living on consumer mentality easy come easy go as in on a day to day hand to mouth not thinking about tomorrow not storing up friendships not storing up data not storing up food not storing up money not making investments just you know living the way life has come with this mentality that the future will give me surplus the future will give me something better the future will give me an opportunity to earn more or to have more income thereby i don't need to be having reserves i've learned that in whatever circumstance i am in however squeezed it might be there is always the opportunity to build a reserve and you can build reserves not just in money not just in food but you can build reserves in very many areas of your life so for the most part my life has been on the postponed mode i think that i will really live and uh, be happy when something has happened when i get married when i do a book and it becomes a best seller when i get some savings in my account when i take my kids to school when i build this and i build that and i forget about the future i forget about right now building for the future especially financial reserves and financial investments i've been guilty of starting investments and leaving them hanging you know not being consistent 
covenant with them and I have been defaulting on them and I have been, been guilty of being a consumer rather than an investor just eating and eating and eating I have thought and that I needed to have a huge big income so that I can have a windfall so that I can be able to invest so that I can be able to save my first assignment was to you know work with the government after high school and I can tell you that is the perfect example that I had we were being given money that was tax free we were being hired as voter clerks and voter registration clerks and I did this job for about 6 months I can estimate about 6 months and then after the elections they needed voter counting clerks and we went there and I did this job and money came in hordes of money that I'd never earned in my life before and if you ask me if I ever reserved that money if I ever put that money in any savings in any investment scheme I will tell you I don't I, I don't remember doing that I didn't do it. What did I do? I bought jeans. I gave the money away to my parents. I gave the money away to my cousins. I used the money to buy food. I used the money to buy things and so on and so forth. I was basically a consumer through and through. Just act like a locust. I mean just finish the whole detail, the whole thing. I have learned by the way and i've come to do it through calculations that if i took that money all of it because at the time i was doing this i was living in the village there was no need for house rent there was no need for food buying food because we had a farm which we were growing food on a daily basis there was no need for me to spend that money the way i did spend so if i took all that money that amount of money and put it in a reserve account or put it in an account or in a scheme in an investment scheme that could be earning me even if it was 7% even if it was under inflation or maybe above inflation 7% per annum i'm telling you by today by today the money that i will be earning will be in millions of kenya shillings i did not build the reserves and i need those reserves right now i have learned in my life today that today matters for tomorrow today is a seed for tomorrow so today i have an opportunity to build those reserves i believe i mean i'm looking at these things that i used to do and i'm thinking what kind of a mess that was but today i have an opportunity to build those reserves if i had invested that cash chances are that I will have done something worthwhile years after reserves do you know what they do they buy you time in a moment of crisis they buy you time in a moment of disaster you know when you are at the crossroads of your life when you are at your downfall when you are at your when at when you are at your winter stage in your life guess what bails you what bails you is the reserve that you built because the reserve that you built gives you the peace of mind that you're going through to go through the season without necessarily worrying about what will go wrong and you need the peace of mind so that you can think better so that you can structure your your thoughts better and you can plan better and you can think of how you can do life at the present moment so reserves are, are something that is is absolutely important and this is what i would have reserved i mean this is what i have learned to reserve in terms of finances to build reserves in terms of finances to build reserves in terms of knowledge my goodness the knowledge that i have today is a re- as a result of the reserve that i was building so today i have an opportunity to reserve knowledge and also to reserve friendships I think there's a scripture that says that uh, on the day of adversity a friend is the one it, it it says that you use the finances that you have today to build friendships that can help you in the moment of adversity so I've learned if I was to go back and start over again one of the most important things that I will do is to build as much reserves as possible build reserves as in think for the future don't just think for today 
Think for the future and store for the future. Prepare for the future. Plan for the future. Work for the future. Don't just spend everything and finish every single thing that you have today. Learn to live and store reserves for the future. If I was to go back. And then number eight, even as I come to a close of this episode today. If I was to go back and do my life again and start over. Number eight, I would buy the truth and never sell it at any cost. Now, truth is something very interesting. It is Winston Churchill who said famously that truth is incontrovertible. Panic may resent it. Ignorance may deride it. Malice may distort it. But in the end, there it is. If I was to go back in my life and live it over again, I would buy the truth, cherish the truth, and not sell it at any cost. And I know that this is painful even as I speak. Truth is not something that is cheap. One of the most valuable things on the face of the earth is truth. It is truth. And I've learned that every time I resent truth, every time I ignore truth, every time I try to circumvent the truth, it comes back and bites me hard. It comes back and haunts me. It comes back and derails me. The amount of time that I thought I would have gathered by short-circuiting the truth, that is the amount of time that I will lose in quadruple when truth catches up with me. So in my few years that I've been alive, There are times that I have suffered greatly losing valuables and losing reputation because I did not honor the truth. Every time I tried to short circuit and stifle the truth, it came back and it hit me hard. Hard. Truth is not cheap, I can tell you. It is not easy to maintain. It is a serious taste of integrity it is a serious test of someone's character whatever the price i have learned that i had better be on the correct side of the truth from the word go if i were to live my life over again this will be something that i will cherish it over and over and over again because i know the benefits of truth i know that it has its price to pay i know it has a cost on it and it is not on the chip but i can tell you by the end of the day at the end of the day the benefits that you accrue from buying the truth and not selling it and i think that is scripture that says buy the truth and don't sell it the benefits that you accrue from it will be something that will propel you higher, farther than you ever thought you would go, than you ever thought they would take you. So that's my message to you today. If I was to go over my life again, if I was to live my life again today, I have shared number eight. I would buy the truth and I will never sell it. And I've shared number seven. I will be more hawkish about building reserves i hope this makes sense to you and i hope even as you continue listening to this mini series you are also making this review in your life to think of the things that you will do the things that you will not do if you are to go back in your life and start again and we're doing this because today is an opportunity for us to implement these truths So thank you for listening and stay tuned for the next, I think the last episode on this mini-series. If I was to go back, what would I do? Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.